Hello my friends, welcome back to another uh, little short tutorial. Um, I just wanted to show you a few small things I think you might find interesting. First of all, I just wanted to show you my setup. I had a question on my channel about my setup in the studio. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick look around and see what's what and show you what I have um, for my basic tutorials. Okay, um, just stuff that I put together myself, um, nothing too expensive. So anyone can do this, okay? Anyone can do it. Um, you can do it very, very cheaply as well. You don't need lots of fancy equipment, although I would love to have fancy equipment. I really would. But it's just so expensive, some of this stuff. Um, but I'm going to show you what works for me. This works for me. Um, I have a little tripod. It's actually um, a metal easel set up here. Let me show you. So this is a metal, it's a normal metal easel, okay? I have it set up. And then I have this uh, camera tripod on it, okay? It's just taped around with some tape. Um, I find this much easier to use. Now, I put a fitting on here for my phone, okay? Because I, re I record um, my tutorials with my phone uh, because the camera quality on my phone here is very good. Um, the colors are nice and rich. So I just got myself a, a camcorder tripod uh, sometimes I use this just on its own, on a table or something like that, but I find it easier just to tape it onto the back of my easel, okay? You can see the bar coming up there from the easel. It's taped onto the easel. It gives me a lot more flexibility. Um, I can raise the legs up and down as high as I like. It goes right up very high all the way up here if I need it. Um, but this is very, very handy, you know? So you can move it up or down, left and right, um, just to get the right, correct camera angle on the canvas so it's facing my canvas like this then you see this is just a normal table easel um you know i could go and buy a big fancy standing easel uh, but there's really no need i have a couple of these so i might as well just use them i have a sheet of board plywood just on the back here with some timber going across the bottom for support and i put my palette there and my canvas there so when i'm filming i just zoom into around here so I can show my reference photograph up in this corner um, and paint away. I also have a little stand here with my phone for the reference photograph. So I have my reference photograph here next to me, just to look, glance at it when I need to. Um, my turpentine in there, tissue and my brushes. Okay, plenty of brushes. I have a lot of brushes. A couple of more up there in a bowl. Um, so lots of stuff. I also use a tearaway palette, okay? A simple tearaway palette because you can peel this off and just chuck it in a bin. It's very handy. And start again with a fresh, clean one. So, my paints, I use Georgian paints, okay? They're probably the best quality paints out there. Um, many of you may disagree, but I find these that they just retain their color lovely. They keep their color for a very long time. Um, they're nice and rich and they're nice and thick and pasty as well, you see. They don't tend to run off the palette. Um, I just keep everything in my box here. I made this box myself just out of some scraps of wood. Um, it's a handy little thing, just for carrying it around the place if I'm going out and about. So I have room there to fit my palette. It fits in there perfectly and I clamp it down with that um, and then close the box and I have room there for a little canvas. So everything fits nice and neatly into this little box. So that's it, really. Um, my lighting, I have LED bright white lights, okay? Um, these are all LED. Um, very bright. So they cast the perfect amount of light. And these are daylight bulbs, okay? Um, I did have all the ones, but they were very sort of yellow. And they gave an awful yellowy color to my tutorials. So I changed them. Um, I also have a little dolly here, which I made up as well. It's bolted onto this piece of timber here on the roof. So this is very similar as well. Um, you can see the same type of claw on this. Um, this moves as well. And I just made this myself. This folds right down now, all the way down here. And it's hanging from the ceiling, okay? So it hangs from that point there, and I can move it around. So it hangs down, and I mount my camera then, and I can move it around whichever way I like. You see what I mean? So that's another one. I don't use it very much because it's not very steady. Um, what else have I got? I have a little telescope here. I love looking at the stars at night. 
I have a lovely little telescope here and I have a pair of binoculars. Um, I have a fascination with the universe and that kind of thing. And I just love watching stars and satellites at night time. Um, so, yeah, a um, couple of palettes thrown around. Lots of my older paintings just kind of stacked up on the shelves. Uh, this is my daughter, Ava. She just finished um, primary school and she's now in, in her, uh, her secondary school in first year. So I made a little frame and a mount for this. Um, I just need to get some glass and um, hang that on the wall somewhere nice. So um, this is my studio, really. Lots of bits and bobs, look, tissue, paint, all that kind of stuff. So I'm always doing something crafty. Do you know what I mean? Um, there are lots of extra paintings as well. They need to be framed. I'm very happy with this one. This turned out lovely, actually. Um, I must frame this. And that's the other one. So don't you think now they would go nice as a set? Because they have very similar shades. You see what I mean? So they would look lovely as a set on someone's wall. But trying to sell them is a the problem. Because over here in Ireland, and not a lot of people buy artwork. Um, you know, it's a very limited area. So it's a matter of getting into the right place, really. And that's it's quite difficult. So what I'm going to do for you now is just show you a little bit about colour mixing, OK? I'm going to show you about mixing cool greens and warm greens and then perhaps cool blues and warm blues, all right? That should help you in your landscape. I think it would really help just for you to, um, just for you to get the basics of colour mixing, okay? So let's mess around here with a bit of colour for a while and um, I'll show you what kind of mixes go well together as well. Um, you might learn something, okay? So let's go and um, set up and do a bit of painting, all right? I'll be right back. So the first colour I'm gonna show you is greens. Let's go with greens for now. Cool greens and warm greens. I have an off cut of canvas here, okay? Um, I'll dampen my brush in some thinners. And, okay, the basic colour for green is cadmium yellow. I have cadmium yellow pale. That's what I use. Nice, rich yellow. So you could use cadmium yellow pale and phthalo blue. Or French ultramarine is very similar as well. Now, that gives you a very rich, vibrant, cold kind of a green. Now, it's, it's not cold as such, but it's on the cooler side of green, okay? This kind of green is perfect for... Um, a wintry landscape where you have, where you might have some hints of green popping up between the snow, that kind of thing, uh, or even um, a very bright summery tree. Okay, so that's a very luminous green. I don't like using luminous greens like that too much. So what I tend to do is take a little phthalo blue. Now you can see that's a very cold green. So again, for a winter scene. This cold green would be perfect, all right, for a cold tree, cold green or cold green on a grass or something like that. Now, you can see they're very luminous and they're very translucent. That's because phthalo blue and cadmium yellow are very translucent colours. They're very translucent and vibrant colours. So you can see right through them and they really pop off of the canvas. My preferred green for any type of painting is cadmium yellow and a little black a tiny amount of black and for me that's a lovely warm kind of an olive green okay you can see the difference let's go down here so you can see that's a much warmer summery kind of a green um you could use this in a summer scene or even an autumn scene would be fantastic as well so nice and warm so you can see the difference that is a little bit more earthy isn't it? So you could go a step further. If you want to warm this a nice bit, just take more yellow, more black first. Okay. And then if you wanted to really warm this, you could take a touch of cyanide or burnt umber. Any one. Let's say burnt umber. Okay. A hint of burnt umber. Now that will give you a nice browny, muddy kind of a green. All right. Perfect for autumn. A lovely autumn green, look at that, and a lovely landscape green as well. So we're going from cool to warm. Now, you can go even warmer again. A little cadmium yellow and a little burnt sienna. 
okay? And then into that, take a tiny, tiny touch of the black. And this will be a very, again, a very autumny. Now that looks like a brown, but that mixed with a hint of the cool color will give you a lovely warm shade. You see that? Again, they're very similar. So I find for landscape painting, the black and yellow is much, much nicer to work with rather than the blue and yellow. Blue and yellow is very, very cold. Um, you know what I mean? Now, let's go and try phthalo blue. And we could then take some burnt umber. Phthalo blue and burnt umber will give you a very dark, rich green, okay? But it's a cold, cold kind of a green. So for the shading on a tree, this is perfect. This would be a perfect color for a dark side of a tree. And then you see you can add varying amounts of color to it, depending on what you want. You could add a hint of cyan, or you could add a hint of cadmium red to warm it slightly. But that is a very blacky green, okay? That's perfect for um, the shadow of a tree. So that kind of a shade as the dark with this as the light would make a lovely summery kind of a tree. <clears throat> you can see what we've done here now just with two or three colors, all those different shades of green. And of course you can vary the amounts that you're using. So take phthalo blue with cadmium yellow, but more phthalo blue. Now you could add a hint of cadmium red to this because cadmium red with blue will give you a purpley color. So now we'll have a lovely color again for a shade off a tree, okay? It's kind of a purpley green. That gives you a lovely shade as well. So there's so much, it's just, it's unlimited, okay? What you can do is just completely unlimited. So that's a nice selection of greens for you to try. Um, again, adding more brown with yellow will give you a more autumny kind of a green. Adding blue with yellow gives you this cool kind of a green. And adding black with yellow gives you a nice earthy, earthy greens. I use black with yellow most of the time. And then perhaps a hint of blue just for the shading or the dark side of the tree, okay? That gives you a lovely varied color. Now I'm gonna try some blues for you. I really only use two blues. I have phthalo blue and cerulean. With those blues, you could probably do anything. I have cobalt as well, but I don't use cobalt blue very much. Um, let's try a couple of blues, look. Now, phthalo blue is very rich. You can see that immediately. So phthalo blue with some white. That'll give you a lovely bright blue sky color, okay? Look at that, lovely bright blue sky color. And then you simply just add white to this. As it goes down the horizon, you're adding more and more white. And it's giving you a lovely soft blue then towards the end. Okay. Cerulean blue with white is a completely different color. Not completely different, but you'll see what I mean. Cerulean blue is more for seascapes. It's a beautiful color for seascapes. Now, even skies as well. But it gives you a very luminous, bright blue. You see that? It's lovely. Now, cerulean blue is not as strong as phthalo blue, so it's much more forgiving. Do you understand? If you can see the difference, phthalo blue is very rich and vibrant and punchy. Cerulean blue is a lot softer. So I would probably use cerulean blue for skies a bit more if I'm doing a soft landscape. So a lovely soft blue. Now, you can also have greeny blues for seascapes. This is perfect now for seascapes, okay? You could take a little cerulean and a hint of cadmium yellow. And that gives you a beautiful turquoisey blue. You see that? The perfect combination for painting any seascape. And again, just add varying amounts to get the shade you want. Then a touch of white. And look, you have a beautiful turquoisey ocean kind of a blue. 
Isn't that lovely? And simply, now you can add white to lighten them, but I would use Naples yellow, okay? Because Naples yellow will soften the color as you're lightening it. So you can see we have a more of a greeny color here. So a nice turquoise color. Then just take some white. And you get lovely bright shades of a turquoise. Now, do you follow? So we're going from cool colors to warmer shades. Now, if you're using phthalo blue, for instance, you could take a hint of cadmium red. And then we're going into more of the warm shades of blue, okay? So now we're going more warm. So there's a little bit of red in here. We're getting warm. And it's simply just keep adding little amounts of red until you get the color you like. So we're going into a warm kind of a mauvey blue down here. I hope you're following. And it's good practice. Just try something like this just to practice at home. Now I'll take plenty of cadmium red and a little phthalo blue. That gives me a beautiful plummy color, doesn't it? Perfect for sunsets, um, even snow scenes. Perfect color for that. Canvas is very dry. It's very, very dry raw canvas, okay? So I do apologize. But look, it's fine. And then, of course, you have your very dark, cold blue. Phthalo blue, but black. And that's a very cold, dark, rich blue. Um, if you're painting stormy seascapes or something like that, this is perfect. So any of these blues combined in a seascape now would be lovely, or even a landscape, okay? Any of those. So you can see the amount of flexibility you have in painting, and this is really just the tip of the iceberg. You can combine any of these as well, okay? So they'll be your secondary colors. Um, <clears throat> so we'll call these our primary shades. But then if you mix little amounts of each of these together, you get more secondary shades. So it just goes on and on and on and on. Do you understand what I mean? There's so much you can do. Um, let's mess around. Let's try. Um, <clears throat> let's try some cerulean blue and then take a hint of cadmium red. And this is what I do. Then I just mix a few colors, just try different mixes and see what happens. Okay. Now, Cadmium red with cerulean blue, and we could try the hint of Naples yellow. Let's see what that gives us. And that's kind of a greeny blue again, isn't it? Almost a hint of grey. Grey is another one I want to show you. Because greys are very important in the painting. They're probably the most important shade to get right, greys. You have to be very careful with greys. So... If I'm making a basic grey, some black and some white, okay? And that's a basic grey. Now, because I use lamp black, it's a kind of a warmer shade of grey. You have ivory black as well, which is kind of a browny shade of grey, but this is just right for me, lamp black, okay? Now, we have a basic shade of grey there. I find a lovely grey is lamp black, some white and a little Naples yellow. I find that a lovely warm shade of grey. You see that? See how that's nice and warm and it's soft. A lovely warm colour. Now you can also add a little hint of cyanide into that. And that gives you a lovely, again, a lovely warm browny sort of a grey. Again, for a warm painting, I would use these shades of grey. Nice, subtle, subtle greys. But then you could go to the cool side of greys simply by taking some black and a hint of phthalo blue. And immediately you have a cold grey. A very cold shade of grey. You see? And then if you just keep adding hints of blue, you get a colder and colder and colder shade of grey. Okay? 
there we go and it's called one at the very end so you can see it's just about trying different mixes okay that's really all it is um don't be shy with your brush just have a go so like i mean these will be the basic tones i would use in my landscape earthy soft colors and then you go into more of the browns and orangey colors cyan as burnt umbers um i don't use yellow ochre i just never i haven't used it in years i don't really find a need to use yellow ochre i have a tube of it i think here somewhere um it's years and years old um i never really used it i just find my palette that i have here i can paint most colors i need just even with this palette okay these colors i could probably achieve any shade and it's much easier let me just turn the camera slightly okay let's go up a bit um it's much easier and it's much better for you as an artist if you can mix your shades okay um i know a lot of people just open a tube and put out a color and use that color i prefer to mix my shades um it's just for practice it's much better for you as an artist to learn um and it just gives you a lot more flexibility in your painting because you can achieve certain shades which you just cannot get from the tube so I, that's why i always like to mix even if i'm mixing a simple blue for a sky we'll say um i could just open a tube of cobalt blue and mix some white into it and that's it but i prefer to mix maybe phthalo blue with a touch of cadmium red and white and that gives you just a nice shade of blue and you're discovering as you go along you're learning new shades and you think oh yeah that's a nice shade i could use that in my next landscape or for a tree or for some grass or something i prefer mixing my own shades i think it's just it's it goes with painting i think it's the whole element of painting it's the fundamental of painting mixing colors so i would rather mix my shades and just get the right shade than to just pop open a tube and take it and put it on my canvas okay so look i hope you've learned a little bit about mixing colors um lovely earthy shades i know some of you might might prefer um rich vibrant colors and that's lovely but i just personally prefer um earthy colors i think it makes for a more natural looking landscape all right natural colors so try it and see um, i hope you've enjoyed watching the video a little short video for you today um i'll be back with a tutorial very very soon happy painting and god bless